Yo, this is Key Glock, and you're watching Hot New Hip Hop on the come up. Yeah. Growing up in South Memphis, it was, it was, it was rough. It was rough and fun, you know, like, Memphis taught me everything, like, everything I know, like, as far as, as far as about business, about street life, just, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's true when they say there's no place like home, and I'm glad, I'm glad to say I'm from Memphis because, like, the way, the way we built down there, the way I'm built, it's like, I can go anywhere else and, and live, like, you know what I'm saying, and, and adapt just because of how, how my home, hometown is set up and how they breed or so. School was never my thing, but it was something I had to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like me personally, all I, like, once I got to high school, I was like, shit, I know how to count, I know how to spell, I know how to write, I know how to read, like, I know how to do these things well. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, but far as, like, like, Algebra, pre cal and shit. Like, I never understood. I never understood it because I was like, man, I'm not finna, I'm not finna be using these uh type of problems in the everyday life. I'm not finna be like, what's x minus y equals z times two? Like, I'm not finna be doing that with money and in, in, in my finances. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just, just irrelevant to me. I was, you know what I'm saying? Book smart. I got common sense, basically. I don't laugh when I say this. My favorite subject was probably fitness, gym. <laughs> I ain't have a, a main parent because like, everybody loved me, everybody looked after me, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't one that that, that stood out over the other one. Like in my eyes, I never looked at, at it like that. But I was raised in a household with, with women. Like my mother was away, so I was living with my grandmother, which is my mother's mother. And my grandmother was living with her mother, which is my great grandmother. So I was living with my grandmother and great grandmother. Right before my mother came home, I had moved with my auntie, which had just passed away, my auntie Yolanda. That's my favorite auntie, my mother's favorite auntie. It was like, like, like I said, it was my grandmother and my great grandmother, but my auntie was was the third piece of the puzzle, you know what I'm saying? That they, they completed me, you know what I'm saying? So I moved with her right before my mother came home, which was my senior year of high school. And it's all my mother asked me to do. My auntie was like, you know you don't want to go to college. You know that ain't your thing, blah, blah, so and so. Just just get your diploma. I was like, I'm like all right. To me, I'm like, oh, this shit ain't nothing. I'm, I'm finna get that. That's, that's all, OK. So. That's what it was. It's like, I don't even be knowing or thinking she be like too hip or be up to date with what I be doing because I prefer her not to. I was like, this ain't for you, but she knows everything about me. Like, she, she quick to tell me, she like, boy, you my son. You think I don't know this? I don't know that? Like, it's just how we deal with her. We best friends, we sisters and brothers. I just had a name in the city. I had a name in the streets, had a name around the school. I've always been popular, always been that guy. Like, everybody always knew who I was, I always had some going. So I was like, let me just do something right quick. And once I did it, I got so much feedback and, and great responses. I was like, it went to my head. I was like, oh, yeah, I, this, this it ain't like nothing. I'm finna, I'm finna take it and run with it. And that's exactly what I did. I just didn't know it was gonna happen this quick, but I always knew it was gonna happen. Though. I think I recorded it in the house. I think I recorded it at the house, but the original song is is by Gucci Mane. It's called Don't Deserve. You can look it up and listen to it right now. Like I was so in love with that song. Like I just went on YouTube and I was, and I typed in the beat. I'm like Gucci Mane, Don't Deserve, instrumental. And goddamn, it's right there. I, you know what I'm saying? I I clicked on, I played it. So I'm just listening to it. Just you no, know, just like any little kid at a lunch table, just rapping, listening to the beat. Boom, I was, I was like, man, I'm gonna drop this after school. Like, I was, it was just, it was just, it was just eating me up inside, you know what I'm saying? I loved the song that much because I was already a, a Gucci fanatic, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, this is how it went. That's what started it off.
That's what started off. And I sent Gucci this song like a couple months ago. I like, bro, you you the reason, you one of the reasons I, I, I started rapping. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I sent him that song, the song you're talking about right now, Echo. He like, like, you need to go back to this old thing. He was like, he was hard. I like, nigga, I'm still hard. I'm always in the city. But like the way I move, I always move the way I move. Like, I don't let my left hand know what my right hand doing. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm so I'm so proud with my life. Like, mom, you gonna be mad when you see this. I be having to, I be having to lie to my own mama sometimes. Like, this it, it's it's just something I got with myself. It's like I just just move different. You'll never catch me with a hundred, hundred, hundred people with me. Like, just, I'm just different. Like, just <laughs> future. And I feel like Sosa set the tone for, set the tone. I think she keep probably like three years, four years older than me. Like when he, when he, right when he came out, he was at 16. I think I was like 13, 14. You know what I'm saying? He had, he just, he just, he just took the nation by storm. Took the nation by storm, and that's what, that's what made it like open up. Like, ah, uh, this a, this a, this a, this a youth thing now. This a, this a young nigga world. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's switch it up right quick, and, and that's kind of still what's going on right now. I met you, Key, before I was like Key Glock before before the world knew Key Glock. She Key knew Key Glock, you know. And we still, we still conversate to this day. We still talk like, as my man, like we, we just alike. Like you know what I'm saying. I think that's why we, why we click tight like that. Cause we, we just alike. We don't fuck around. We don't fuck with nobody. We just handle our business and live our life. <laughs> a man through uh, a mutual friend of mine. He's he's passed away now. Uh, his name Jay Money. He was from Memphis too. But if you know me. You know Jay Money, like you know Jay Money, you, you know you knew what was up with him, you knew how his name here waiting in the city, so it's just like it's a long story, it's like you know what I'm saying, but that's a whole nother interview. Like, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Jay Money. I didn't even like know it was gonna happen this way. I never took it serious. I never I never introduced him to my music or asked him about signing me or none of that. It was just Everything just kind of happened for a reason. Like earlier, my auntie that I was telling you about that passed away, she's married to Young Dolph's uncle. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's how that's how we're cousins to marriage. And both of them are now passed away. So that's another reason why we're just, you know what I'm saying? Our bond is just stronger and tighter. Like it's really deeper than rap. It's, you know what I'm saying? Like blood is really thicker than water. It's like, it's nothing I won't do for him. It's nothing he won't do for me. I was young, I was like 18, 18 going on 19. I wasn't, I was I was in the streets. Like <laughs> I wasn't too too hip to and had too much knowledge about the music industry like I do now. So back then, ain't no telling I probably would have been head first, like, you know what I'm saying? Like we I would have went with whatever, whoever, like, come on with it. What as long as the bag right. But now, like, by just by me being around Dolph and learning more about the business and, and how he orchestrates shit. Like, cause I'm, I'm right there all the time. I see what's going on, know what's going on. It was my auntie, the one that introduced him to my music cause I was incarcerated. Like soon as I graduated, like my mama came home, I went in. Like though I told you, it's, it's a long story. <laughs> Shit's all over the place. But while I was incarcerated, I had a song out at the time called Zeros. And it was buzzing through the buzzing through the city. I had dropped my first tape on my own called Whole Lot Everything. Boom. So boom, I had ended up calling my uh, calling my auntie while I was in jail, just calling, just checking up on her. She was like, uh, my main, my main wanna holler at you. It's uh it's dog nickname, don't nobody know that though. What we call him in the family. She's like, my main wanna holler at you, so and so, so and so, so. Like, all right, she, I was like, uh. Until I'm finna get out uh, in like a week or two anyway. I was like, I just, I just holler at them then. Like, cause I always had a thing with like, I don't, I didn't like visitations, talking on the phone shit. Like, cause this shit made me feel like I'm setting myself to be there when I'm knowing I'm finna roll. Like, I ain't finna be here like 
we ain't even finna make this a thing. So don't even get comfortable with visiting and, and, and calling. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how, that's how it all happened. Like, we cousins, but we brothers. Like, like you know what I'm saying? We partners. Like, for sure. It's like, I help him pick his track list for a tape, or I let him pick my whole track list for my, for my tape. Like, it's just, it's just different things we do. It's just like, I tell him, I even give him a, a, a treatment for a video. I, I, I gave him like two treatments before for a video. He gave me like five. Like, that's just how we work and we can, like, we can do that. We, not cause we independent, but we really bond like that. And we, we know, you know what I'm saying? We know each other is on. Why real? Like, I can relate to why I don't, I fully understand why the way he moves, the way he act and everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's, that, that's why he like, he been, he been my favorite rapper for a reason cause it's, cause it's attitude and personality. Like I'm kind of the same way. I don't need nobody, don't need nothing. I got me, I know what I'm gonna do and I know how to do it. It's just, I don't give a fuck attitude. It's, I don't know, that's my boy. <laughs> I found band play through my uh, uncle. My uncle was living in Nashville at the time. Coop, named Coop, he was doing a lot of uh, parties and whatnot out there. He told me about band play. He's like, you heard a band play? A band play, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? He just playing his shit for me. So I listened to him like, man, dude, huh? I'm like, where you from? He's like, man, bro from Nashville. I'm like, Nashville. He's like, yeah, he just uh he just produced a whole country album for songs. I forgot who the dude was. I like, I like how oh, he versatile like that. I was like, I was like, uh, hit him up for me, tell him send me some stuff. Long story short, boom, he he um we link up, I do a Couple songs like uh, Cocky. He did most of Glock Bun. Basically, like my second tape was all, like he was all over that. Then I remember, I say about a month or two later, Dolph called me out the blue. He was like, uh, man, what's up with band play? I'm like, shit, what you mean? What's up with him? He was like, man, that nigga hard. I'm like, yeah, yeah, he hard. He was like, um, Hey, bro, I need you to link me with him, so and so, so and so. I'm like, I'm like, huh, bro, I'm just finna uh, shoot you his number and let you know uh, you finna call him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just, just, just like that, and boom, next thing I know, gang, gang, a lot familiar. <laughs> Take, he been producing, like, been producing, been hosting tapes, like, you know what I'm saying, in the city. So, boom, it was like him, me, another partner that went to school with us named Nick. Block, Block Bull was rapping at the time. And um, uh, me see. Who else? But well, long story short, that's who was that's who all he was working with, and that's why like was, you know what I'm saying? Had a had a name still even then in the city. So it was just like that. Like even still to this day, I got emails, I got beats of Tay Keith from like 2016, 2017. Like with a whole different tag than the new one y'all hear now and all that shit. Like, it's been my boy, like, we got real understanding. <laughs> it's like, I ask him how he want to do it. Uh, then again, he'll be like, shit, it's however you want to do it. But like, then it's like, I got the pressure on me. I'm like, nah, bro, it's whatever you want to do. So then it turns off us and it turns to our circle, like our, our game. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whoever's in the studio. Then it turns to them. They they turn into the decision makers. You know what I'm saying? But we don't just look at it like, ah, 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 me, me, me. Like, we all look at each other as one. Dumb, dumb three, it's already done. I never liked it doing sequels. I never planned on even doing a sequel. But it's more of like a statement. It's like, like their colors, like it was my great great grandmother's favorite color. It's like then, like y'all look at it as yellow. I look at it like it's gold. Like you know what I'm saying? Because I'm a player, but I just had to keep it going because the first one made so much of a statement, and I had to like I had them let them know like it's, it's actually yellow tape. Like when you see yellow tape, you know what it means. Mean like. 
like caution, be aware something done happened, something about to happen. Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? But I'm letting you know it's still yellow tape. This shit still happening. It's still about to happen. <laughs> like for real. <laughs> yeah, it's just one feature. But he he on every song though. It's really like a collab tape, but it's it's not. Basically, I'm introducing my uh my other artists. He's on every song. The one feature, the one feature, Glizzy. <laughs> I mean, song, put twenty. It's not just one thing. I'm, I'm, they gonna, they gonna remember me for a lot. It ain't even just one thing. I can't even just pinpoint one thing out because I got so much shit and do much, so much shit that other rappers don't do or don't have, so.